Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung, and for this video I want to look at the eye model. I'm going to take off its base, and we'll look at the external features or parts of the eye first. The cornea is this clear space that you can see in the front of the eye. In this model it's very clear plastic. The sclera is the white of the eye that you can see behind the cornea. And then the extrinsic muscles are these muscles that you see around the outside of the eye. This one happens to be a right eye, and this, which is the superior oblique muscle, it points medially. So if this was a big head, what you'd see is a nose over here, and this would be the person's right eye. So from that, the reason I say that is that it helps us get the landmarks for the uh, medial rectus and the lateral rectus muscles. All right, so starting from the top, this is the superior rectus. On the bottom is the inferior rectus. Superior rectus lets the eye roll upwards. The inferior rectus rolls the eye downwards. The medial rectus rolls the eye medially towards the nose, again, if the nose was over here. The lateral rectus rolls the eye laterally away from the nose. The superior oblique literally twists the eye in this direction, and the inferior oblique, ob, inferior oblique twists the eye in the other direction. And from the bottom, this is the inferior oblique. So those are the extrinsic muscles of the eye. The other feature you can see for, without opening the eyeball yet is the optic nerve. It's this bulge coming out of the back of the eye. It's going to carry, uh, it has the neurons in it, the, the neuron fibers, the axons that carry action potentials back to the brain to give you that information of sight. All right, we're going to open the eye now. Um, first I'll talk about the layers of the eye. This is the outer layer. It's called the sclera, the white of the eye, which we've already talked about. The next layer down is called the choroid. It's a darkly pigmented layer, so they've got it as a dark brown on this model. And then I'll show you the third layer inside here. This is the retina, kind of a tan color. And there's a number in there from the last lab exam that I taught with this eye. Obviously, it was number 36. And since it's in there, I'll show you this is the ciliary body. And that's how I like to label the ciliary body. I just cut the sticker so it fits on it nicely and put it right on the ciliary body. So again, this is ciliary body. The ciliary body is attached to the iris. This is the iris. It's the colored part of your eye. So if you have brown eyes or blue eyes or hazel eyes, the iris is what actually has that pigment, and the iris is an extension of that ciliary body. The iris's function is to make this hole larger or smaller, to constrict the pupil or to dilate the pupil. The ciliary body's job is to constrict and allow the lens to roll up and get thicker, and if I take the lens out of this part down here, the lens sits in here, something like this, and when the ciliary body contracts, it makes the lens go from a more thin shape to a thicker shape. And what that does is it bends the light more as it goes back toward the retina and allows us to see close objects. So when you look at something that's close up, the ciliary body contracts, the lens accommodates, and the light is bent more so that you can see that closer object. When you look at something that's farther away, the ciliary body relaxes, the lens accommodates to thin, and you can see that object that's more farther away. As we age, the lens becomes more brittle. It becomes less um, elastic. And when the ciliary body contracts, the lens does not round up as much as it should because of that. And that's why older people have a tougher time seeing objects that are close up, like reading a book. So 
So this is the lens again. That's what this part is, and I might have this alone on the bench. So be ready to recognize that as the lens. The other clear part is this big one right here, and that is supposed to be vitreous humor. Compartments of the eye I had not talked about yet. And I'll talk about it with everything, all of those little parts out of it. This compartment up here is the anterior compartment because it's towards the front of the eye. It is between the iris and the cornea. Or some textbooks say it's between the lens and the cornea. Both of those are correct. The compartment is filled with aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is produced back here in the ciliary body and it flows around the lens and nourishes the lens and then it flows up through the pupil and into the anterior compartment. The aqueous humor is removed down in this region uh, around this whole circle in, this, in the edge of the circle um, and the part that removes it is called the canal of Schlem. It's a venous network in this area. If the canal of Schlem is blocked, you could have glaucoma. You'd have the aqueous humor produced by the ciliary body, but it wouldn't be collected again by the canal of Schlem. And the result from that is an internal pressure increase inside of the ball of the eye. Eventually, that pressure affects the optic nerve where it leaves back here, and it causes damage, and that causes blindness. So that, again, is anterior compartment. The posterior compartment is back here, and it's filled with vitreous humor. So the vitreous humor is in the posterior compartment. The aqueous humor is in the anterior compartment. Let me take this vitreous out again, and I'll take the lens out. And let's look at some structures towards the back of the retinal surface. This purple dot is supposed to be the fovea centralis, which is your center of vision. The largest number of cones is in this region, and there's a lot of them. There's very few rods in this region. The cones are the detectors for, for color of light, so they detect different wavelengths of light so that we can see color. The three colors are red, blue, and green. The most common type of color blindness is red-green color blindness. It's a problem where the person has difficulty distinguishing between the colors red and green. And the reason they have that difficulty is because they're missing either the red cones um, or the green cones. The other object towards the back of the eye here is called the optic disc. It is the area on the retina where the optic nerve is leaving the eye. And what that leaves you with is a blind spot in each eye. If you close one of your eyes and do a certain test, you can actually see this blind spot. Optic nerve again leaves back here. And I think I may have gone through all of the features and parts of the eye that you need to know. I'm looking over it one more time just to make sure. And while I'm doing that, I'll put it back together and name things as I go. White parts the sclera. Extrinsic muscle is out here. This is the bottom of the model, so this is the inferior extrinsic muscle. Um, this one's the medial extrinsic muscle, lateral extrinsic muscle, and inferior oblique muscle. The brown part is the choroid layer. I'll put that back in. Up front we have the iris, and in front of that we have the cornea on the outside. The hole in the iris is called the pupil. Here comes the vitreous humor, and I am placing it into the posterior compartment. Here comes the lens which will go in where the ciliary body is. And then here comes the top of this internal part of the model. And finally, the very top, superior rectus, superior oblique muscle. And those are all of the parts of the eye. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email or call me. Thank you very much for watching.